Hey guys, this is me Rachit and welcome to yet another video. Today we will be talking about graph theory and I remember distinctly that when I was in my university I hated this topic a lot. More than hate I really feared this topic and I love it now but I know that beginners face a lot of problems in graph theory or graphs or whatever you want to call this graph trees etc etc they are especially very much important when you are talking in terms of placements or coding interviews because Google Amazon or any other good company today is going to ask you questions or test your knowledge on trees graphs and other things you should know how to do basic traversals and other things so in this video um, I'm trying to share a kind of um, get you started video on graphs and trees so that you just don't hate it or fear it anymore and you can after this video perhaps start maybe looking out for more videos or maybe start looking out on the net to to develop more skills on graphs and trees so that's the intent of this topic and I'll be walking you through the basic terminology in graphs and how we can also code them so this is what you can expect we'll be walking through the basic graphs nodes edges forests dfs traversals and all those things and side by side i'll also be implementing that in c um, this is a new environment that i am in right now i am i have switched to ubuntu and this is basically vim editor that i'll be using today so let me know in comments what do you think and without any further ado let's start with the video all right so um let me first open um, notepad I mean Vim of course so let's say we want to create a graph and um, on pen and paper it's really very easy but when you're talking uh, when you're talking in terms of a computer programmer what does graph really mean and how do you store it that's the first question so let's say we have a graph of six nodes um, I would say let's say six nodes and it has five edges um, let's say it has an edge from the node one to two 2 to 3, 3 to 1, so that's a cycle because there is an edge from 1 to 2, 2, 3, and then 1. Let's say this also an edge from 2 to 6, and we have 4 to 5. So, what does this mean? Like, I have written some random garbage over here, but it's not that random. Um, what it really means is that we have six nodes um, that's mentioned in the 11th line above, and then it has five edges, so that's the first line. Then we have an edge from 1 to 2, as mentioned in the second line. Um, I mean second as in yeah this the second line this is saying that one to do is there is an edge so coming back um, so let's let's first draw the graph for this so we have an edge from one to two okay and then we have two to three so let's draw it somewhere at the down because one is also having an edge to three so I'm really bad uh, really bad at drawing so please bear with me so yeah so 1 to 2 2 to 3 and 3 to 1 edges are covered now we have an edge from 2 to 6 so this is how it is and then we have 4 to 5 so yeah this is the structure of a graph so what we can say is that it has six nodes five edges as you can see um, also it has two forests um, the forest one it's having the nodes 1 2 3 and 6 and um, forest 2 it's having 4 and 5 so yeah uh, that's another thing I, I, thought, I thought it's worth mentioning also um, as you can see forest 1 has a cycle um, cycle of 1 2 and 3 so these are the these are the properties or terminology which you will encounter when dealing with graphs um, what else what else um, also forest one is not a tree so forest one is not a tree and forest two is a tree but it's like a really simple tree so what what does tree mean so every tree is a graph that's one thing every tree is a graph um, the essential difference between tree and graphs is that trees do not have any cycles also um, there is one forest in a tree Okay, so if we remove three from the forest one, so we have one, two, six, four, and five. Um, so now what you can say is the graph is having two trees. Um, one, two, and six is a tree, and then four and five is another tree. But what we cannot say that this combined collection of nodes of one, two, four, five, and six is a tree because a tree cannot have more than one forest. So basically, a tree is nothing but a single forest with no cycles, which let's do an important discovery over here it means that for n nodes in a tree 
um, since it's having only one forest and there is no cycle it will always have n minus one edges um, so that yeah that's that's the main distinction between trees and graphs the other thing is that um, we have a lot of queries so this is the basic terminology um, it's a very brief video please um, don't take this as something which will completely take you to the next level and you can simply crack answers now but yeah just an introduction video so um, the, what are the different kind of questions that you can answer on graphs so one of the question can be can we reach to perhaps four from one so in this case of course the answer for this will be no because from one you can only reach to two three and six and yeah this is one which is famously known as the connectivity problem wherein we are given two nodes x and y and we are asked about the connectivity from x to y also another important thing or the property on this graph is that let me just go up and write that down um, the property is also um, this is an undirected graph which means that if we have a graph uh, or edge from 1 to 2 um, it, it's likewise or both bidirectional we can say so um, soups so yeah so from one we can go to two from two we can go to one in some cases we have direct graphs which is nothing but something like this and then we can have something like this um, so yeah in this case from two you cannot go to one from six you cannot go to two or one so in this case uh, the connectivity query from one to six is true but the opposite is not true so this is essentially a directed graph it's a normal graph with directed edges all right things look good and this is the basic terminology that you needed to know and now um, let me also talk about dfs so what does dfs mean the dfs stands for depth first search traversal and the only thing that you need to care about right now is that it's a way or it's a function in which we pass in a node and it is responsible to traverse all the nodes which we can reach from that particular node so in this case if we perform a dfs traversal from node 2 essentially it should traverse nodes 1 2 3 and 6 so dfs is nothing but iterating on all the nodes in a given forest so that's what dfs is and now i think i have really bored you a lot um, let's now start the code section um, let me just split the screen um, i will perhaps call the new file as graph intro.cpp all right um, we can do the basic stuff So, um, int main, oops, yeah, um, so let's first take the input or let's first actually redirect the input to read from the file that we are having on the right. So to do that, we can simply um, redirect the input. So let's do that, fre open, um, open the file in .txt, read that in read mode and redirect the input over there so essentially now we can read from this file um that's that's why i bored you with that text file creation so in the above line six five one two two three so we'll be using that to construct the graph okay so how do we store that um let's first take the input so number of nodes number of edges and for edge we can have u and v so we can first read the number of nodes and the number of edges now let's read the edges um So to read the edge, we have images, we are reading edges one by one. And then what we are going to do is nothing but g of u dot push underscore back v. Um, and then g of v dot push underscore back u. If you are having troubles understanding the syntax, it's nothing but um, I'm having a list for all the numbers. And when we have an edge from u to v, what I'm going to do is I am adding v to the list of u and I am adding u to the list of v because I am talking about undirected edges. If it's a directed edge, then just comment this line. Um, comment this line for directed edge. Okay. So now coming back, um, in this case, it's uh, undirected edge that I am adding. So I am adding to both. Uh, first, let's declare this g. Otherwise, I, I can understand you are a bit troubles. Uh, you are a bit troubled understanding what's going on. So let's do that. Um, let me just declare a global array. So it's a vector of int 
and an array of that. All right, coming back to line 17. Um, oops, coming back to line 19, of course. Yeah. So now uh, we have done the formation, and now let's let's do one thing. Uh, let's try to um, answer the query of whether we can reach from one to six. Let's let's try that. And um, how we can do is we can first query from one so that all the nodes in the forest of one are traversed and then we can simply check if we visited six we can simply say the answer is yes we can reach to six from one and otherwise we can simply print oops we can't reach awesome so yeah, this looks a fairly good program. Uh, the, the only bad thing is that we have not implemented the DFS function. And what is this Wiz? So Wiz nothing but is a Boolean array. Let's create that. Let's go to line 19 above. And we can, imp mm, yeah. Now, as we are here, let's also implement the DFS function. So now for int v in the list of view, so basically, we are iterating on all the edges that were added to the list of you. We are iterating on all the nodes. And if we have already visited a node, um, we, are we are simply ignoring it because we have already processed it. If we have not visited it, which means we need to visit that, we are doing a DFS. So basically, it's a recursive function. So when we are at you, it will traverse all the neighbors and so on and on. Um, this is necessary just to avoid infinite loop. Otherwise, when we have cycles, um, this code of DFS will go on and on. Like when we call DFS on one, it will have two in its child list. So it will go and call DFS at two. Then it will go and call DFS at three. And then three is also having one and two in its list because it's an undirected edge. And if you have not already marked that we have visited one and two, from three we will again go back to one and two and it will just go on and on. So just to avoid that, I don't want to do that. Um, now, let's do one thing let's mark that we have visited this and as we have done this i think that look good and i think we can simply answer that from one after doing dfs on one we have visited one two three and six and if visited six yes we can reach to six from one otherwise we can yeah so yeah hey guys just wanted to take a break over here and tell that in this video don't get overwhelmed if you're not understanding like for example you might be thinking what is dfs traversal and how are these things functioning but um i have already made a lot of videos as well so i've covered a lot of topics but still it's not complete as compare uh not complete in the sense of coding interviews like you have a lots of things to cover when it comes to coding interviews and uh, algo expert can be really useful over there because they have around 65 videos, not a lot, like 65 videos, and they also have um, video solutions for each and every one of them, wherein they walk you through the complete problem, how to solve them, how brute force will work, and how you can do better, what is the time and space complexities, because these are some things which generally people overlook. That's like a really red flag when it comes to coding interviews. So, um, so this portal is Algo Expert. I have made one video previously, like cracking a coding interview in three to four months and um, in which I have explained how Algo Expert can be useful. So if you want to know more about Algo Expert, you can go to this video and watch my views on that. They have 65 videos which are covering a range of topics, as you can see, arrays, binary search, binary trees, dynamic programming, linked list, heaps, graphs, searching, tries, strings, so many things they have covered. And they also have group by difficulty in which you can, if like you are a real beginner, you can first solve these 12, then these 22 and so on. So this is what I really like about this portal. Thanks, Logard. Now let's quickly run this out. So I'm using G++ to compile this. Um, yeah, let me just. Yeah, it's working. So now let's quickly run this and see. Yes, we can reach two six from one. Awesome. We have got the output as we were. Now let's change the input for a second or, or, or let's change the file itself. Just give me a moment. Okay, so now let's see for the connectivity from one to, um, I don't know. Let's, let me just open the file as well. 
yeah so um let's see the connectivity from one to five in this case we should get a no uh yeah let me just do that so from six to no let's that's line 31 let's go there and then f6 and replace this with five awesome so now if i think if you run the program now it won't work uh, I, it won't work as in it will print that we can't do that so let's quickly compile and then run oops we can't reach so awesome guys um i think in around past 15 minutes we learned the basic terminology for graphs uh, we learned what is the difference between graphs and trees and then we also learned um, how to perform a dfs on a graph we also learned how to query uh, the connectivity query on graphs which is nothing but given x can we reach to y or not so in this case i hope this video was a good starter for you to just you know get you started with graphs the terminology how to get started with the code and stuff and feel free to subscribe and leave any comments if you have and i'll see you next time till then bye bye